Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good, I am great. I'm out here with my coconut palm, and it's very noisy out here today, I'm sorry. I've been waiting like an hour to film this video, and every time it gets quiet, a new neighbor starts with a new piece of lawn equipment. It's just, it's a beautiful day, so everybody wants to be outside. Hopefully that won't be too bothersome. A few weeks ago, I did a video planting up some coconuts. I talked about how, basically just how to get them started, and a little bit about appropriate soil mixes. I didn't go too far into it, because essentially all there is to say there is that it really just needs to be very 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 well drained nice and sandy gritty a good just a good mix that water's not going to sit in for too terribly long and i had said in that video that i would go ahead and do another one talking about the care after you have them potted up and how to really grow them as a house plant and i should have said in that video that i would do a video more as a discussion on how to grow these plants as house plants because here's the thing coconut palms don't make good house plants they're terrible house plants. If you want a plant that is going to uh, be around for many, many, many years, this is, this isn't the one. Find something else. Maybe a Monstera, Sansevieria, something like that. Coconut palm? Eh, no. But they're typically fun to grow for a few years. There are some exceptions. That's why I wanted this video to be more of a discussion as opposed to a how-to. Get online and you're scouring the internet trying to find information on these it tends to be pretty much all over the place as far as what people say to do with these plants in the house. And I can tell you the way I grow them in the house, not the same as what most of the websites will tell you to do. I thought first we should start off with how we think we should grow them inside versus what my experience has been, the good, the bad, what's worked, what hasn't. And then I want to leave it up to everybody down in the comment section to contribute as much as possible. That way everybody's different experiences can kind of all be compiled into a different place and maybe people can pick and pull and figure out what may work for them. The coconut palm, very tropical palm. I would call it diva palm in the sense that they know what they like and if they don't get it then they just die. Typically a coconut palm is going to want very warm conditions with a good amount of humidity, a good amount of airflow, a lot of light, and uh, regular irrigation. Though they have some drought tolerance once they're established, but the air still needs to be nice and moist. Does that sound like the inside of your house? Certainly isn't like the inside of my house. I also want to clarify that I'm speaking more to growing them during the fall and winter and early spring indoors not so much the summertime. If you can get these outdoors during the summertime that really is going to work best. They just they do so much better outside so it's good if you can give them a period of time outside. The longest I've ever kept one alive in a pot as one that's outside during the late spring through summer and then inside fall winter and early spring. I think the longest was like seven to eight years something like that. There are accounts of people online saying that they've had some of theirs for like up to 19 years sometimes but typically I think anywhere from three to we'll say 10 years being generous that seems to be the the average and what you're going to get out of them during that three to ten years not the same as what it would be if they were in the ground they'll tend to be kind of long lanky plants with really stretched out petioles but they're still still fun to have around they're still fun cool looking palms for me what has worked has been to uh, give them less light than you would think you would give them during the winter time i don't try and give them really hot temperatures inside. I don't water them very often and I don't put them in like blazing bright light even though that's what you'd think they would need right? No they've always done better for me when I uh, kind of back off of that a little bit. I will let the soil dry and their pots probably almost 50% of the way I'll let it dry out in between watering so they'll only get watered maybe two or three times a month. And the reason for that is that they're not getting the hot extreme temperatures that they would be getting outside that tells the plant grow, grow, grow. So if watering it, that water is just going to sit around that root mass and it can lead to rot. And rot does seem to be the most consistent problem that people encounter when growing their coconut palms inside. So still a south facing window with lots of bright light. They appreciate that. I cut way back on the watering because I'm not trying to keep the plant moving and growing. And I keep my house around uh, 70 to 72 during the winter time. So it's not very warm at all. I do have a grow space that I can put them in. I'm going to give that a shot this year with some of my smaller ones. I'm going to try growing them in 
the different ways. My grow space is pretty warm, generally lower to mid 80s with lots of artificial lighting and it's pretty humid in there, usually a minimum of about 65 to 75% humidity. And there are circulation fans. I still have a feeling though that the ones that I grow in a, not, I'm not gonna say a dormant way, but just in more of a relaxed winter houseplant care kind of way, will probably do better. Cause that's just always been my experience. And I do not fertilize these during the winter. I stopped fertilizing about six weeks before the first frost. So right around now it's September, 18th today now and it'll be later than that when the video comes out but i think today or tomorrow it's gonna be the last time that this plant will even get any fertilizer until the springtime so again for me what has worked has been moderate to bright light i still water them but just not as often the debate with growing them indoors oftentimes seems to be that people saying that coconut palms well they're a tropical they don't have a dormancy and while that is true you can say the same thing about pretty much all or at least many of other common houseplants, right? Monstera. This is a plant where during the summertime outdoors, I have no issue with how much water this plant gets. It's in a well-drained soil. It's not sitting in anything that's gonna collect water. It could rain and rain and rain and get watered and watered and watered. I'm not gonna worry about it because it's warm outside. There's more airflow. The water is not going to hurt this plant, at least not where I live. I'm not going to get enough rain that's going to hurt this plant. Same thing with the coconut. But indoors, temperatures are cooler and uh, it's not getting the same day lengths. So even though it may not be programmed to go into a rest during the winter time, it's still not getting the conditions it needs to it take in all that water and to continue to grow abundantly and aggressively like it would outdoors. And applying that mindset to the coconut palms is just what's also worked for me. But again, I've, I think the longest I've ever had one inside was about seven, years or so. When you think about it, even some of the most well-respected botanical gardens can't keep these alive inside. So I think that that's telling us something about their care requirements and how difficult it can be to actually grow these, especially to grow them to a point where they actually maintain the form and appearance of a coconut palm. Typically within five to seven years on a coconut palm, you'll start to have some clear trunk and you can expect them to even start fruiting. Whereas indoors, that's, that's not going to happen. What the plant's going to look like in three to five years is nothing like what it would look like if it were in the ground. Even in these big glass climatrons and things like that, it just, it's so hard to mimic what they want indoors as far as getting them growing in that beautiful coconut palm-like way. There is so much background noise, but it just won't stop. And I'm determined to get this video done. And the main cause of death usually seems to be some form of rot, whether that be a stem or bud rot or root rot, something going on down below. And what that tells me, just when I kind of sit back and think about it, is that what's potentially going on there is that these plants are getting lots of warmth inside these big glass buildings. They're getting lots of water, everything you'd think that they would need. The light, of course, to potentially, they can take less light when they're a little bit smaller, but still it's better to give them a lot of sun if possible. But those conditions still aren't meeting the needs that the plant has to actively grow or grow as actively as it potentially can. And then that might be one of the things that's contributing to them rotting out so often. Just a thought, I don't know. Like I said, I want to see more of a discussion on growing these indoors as opposed to a how-to. And there are, I want to say there's like two other factors that have been interesting to me at least as I've been reading through what's worked for people and what hasn't worked for people. One common thing I've come across is a lot of people who are having success with them saying that water there's with aquarium water which is something that I have also done. Usually I have a big pond in my grow space and that's usually what I use to water pretty much all of my plants during the winter months when they're indoors, which could potentially mean that there's something going on down around those roots that has a high dependency on beneficial fungi like the mycorrhiza, something like that. Potentially there's a relationship that maybe dies off more quickly than with other plants. There's a symbiotic situation that goes on down below the soil between the roots and uh, bacteria and fungus. There's a whole thing that happens where things work together and nutrients get broken down, which helps 
feed the plant, of course, and then there's an influence with the plant's hormones, with the oxen, and uh, uh, that's a whole, hormones are a whole different video or series of videos. That's a lot that I could go into. So maybe there's something going on there where they need like a minimal amount of feeding or high mineral content, something like that potentially, but not so much feeding that you would get with like a synthetic fertilizer that's telling the plant keep growing and growing and growing when it, it's not getting the conditions it needs to actually do so other than the fertilizer. It'll lead to lanky weird growth and this it, it can be problematic. I always cut way back on fertilizing during the winter time with the coconuts no fertilizer except for whatever nutrient is in that pond water and I keep my nitrates and my phosphates and ammonia. I mean the ammonia should always be zero but my nitrates and my phosphates stay very low so it's just like a microdose of feed when it comes to the nitrogen and the phosphorus that is. So when you think about where these grow, they tend to grow in areas where the soils are either very organically rich, very tropical places, or even on beaches where maybe the soil isn't organically rich, but very high in mineral content, which is more difficult to mimic inside, but there are lots of ways you can do it. Eggshells, Epsom salts, and Sometimes people will even use, I've done this before, just use like a tablespoon of reef crystals or a salt mix, a synthetic salt mix made for aquariums. I'll put that in like a two gallon thing of water and give that to them during the summertime just, just for a little boost of energy because there's lots of good stuff in those salt mixes. And it's something I have around because I have a saltwater aquarium. I don't know if I would do that otherwise. That salt can get kind of expensive and if you're only using a tablespoon or two at a time, eh, I don't, I, that might be a bit much and kind of reaching as far as what you need to do for these. So there's the aquarium water. Lots of people saying that that's working for them, people who have been growing these inside for a decent amount of time. And then the other thing I've noticed has been that people who've had theirs indoors for a long time, usually they're in very large pots, which makes sense. When you have a palm tree for seven, eight, nine, ten years, it's going to need to be in a big pot, right? So I don't really know if I could break that down too much further. Ah, oh, that's just an observation, but that's probably just because the plants get big and they need a very large pot. But there are a lot of palm trees that you can keep in a small pot for a very long time and they'll be okay. And at coconuts, when they're outside down in the fields in Florida and like they're being prepared and grown out, dug and moved and all those things, they can stay in those pots for a long time, but they're outside year round. We're not talking about year round growth outside. This is indoor care, at least indoors, I'm gonna say half the year other half of the year they really need to be outside. Of course if you have an atrium or a really sunny bathroom, just a really really bright and warm room, that's where I would try them first for sure. But a lot of people don't have those spaces, right? So again, in summary, for me, I let them hang out more during the winter time. I'm not fertilizing them. I'm not watering them frequently. Just basically enough to let them keep going, but not enough to keep them wanting to grow actively. I do still give them as much light as possible, and I'm not going to put them in a place where temperatures are very cool because they don't like that. These are a warm growing plant. So they're still like low 70s, which is pretty cool for a coconut palm. They would prefer things be more in the 80s. But for their overall care during when you have them outside and it's nice and warm, I try and fertilize mine. I just use an all-purpose palm fertilizer. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of Epsom salts just to get some extra magnesium into the soil blend for them. I'll do that usually every other week during the active growing season and I stop like I said six weeks before any risk of frost, six weeks really before it's time to bring them in so that the plant can harden off and start to just kind of slow its system down. As far as troubleshooting with this plant goes that's a whole different thing. The main question I get asked about is when the coconut starts to rot off and that actually happened with this one so I have a whole different video that'll be out I want to say a week or so a few videos after this one dealing with a rotting coconut and the whole whole bunch of problems that can come up with that. And pests that was one thing I talked about spider mites, mealybug scale, thrips they're prone to all of those things. Usually any plant you have in a humid environment with a good amount of airflow you won't have to worry about spider mites as much, but it's you just treat it the same way you would any other house plant. Spray them off, you know, if you can take them to a sink or to a shower, get the bugs off of them, and then it, treat them with a horticultural oil or soap, whatever you prefer to use. Let that sit on there and repeat as necessary. The only thing I'll say specific to a coconut palm or any palm is to avoid letting any liquid settle in that crown for too terribly long. That, is an area that you want to dry out, particularly when they're indoors. Outside, 
not as big of an issue unless you live someplace where it just rains constantly and it's not very warm. But indoors, you know, there's less warmth, less airflow, so liquids can fester longer and that can lead to rot. Yeah, that's enough. I could go on all day talking about coconut palms and all of the various ways people grow them because there are, there are tons of different methods people use for growing them inside. More in relation to what people do if there's soil blends and with fertilizing and amending, but still it would go on forever. And the noise out here, it just keeps getting louder and louder. So comment down below, tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated, especially in this video. Like I said, I wanted this to be more of a discussion than necessarily a how-to talk somewhat about what's worked for me, what's worked for other people, what we think should work, but then for some reason doesn't always work. It could largely be a genetic factor involved here too. Sometimes you just have plants that are more tough and more rugged than others. So the conditions may not even have as much to do with it as we would think. Maybe it's somewhat just luck of the draw. Did you get one that's going to be tough and sturdy and more tolerant? Who knows? That's why I want y'all talking down there. Get a discussion going. Maybe someone watched this video and uh, didn't quite get what they wanted from it, but maybe what you want will be down there in the comments section. It's the beauty of all the plant nerds coming together. We can all compile everything together and hopefully someday there'll be more of a blueprint for reliable ways to grow these plants indoors. God, now there's a saw going. Okay, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.